When I was 19 in school, I, um, you know, I went away to college and actually, you know, and I hate this because people always assume it's the proverbial PK kid wilding out. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? And, it, and I wasn't wild and I wasn't disobedient. I was actually a goody two shoes and wanted to be. But we all make mistakes. And so I uh, went to the same college that my high school sweetheart went to, and that wasn't smart. Mm-hmm. So I ended up having my first child in college. I was 20, 19 the years old. The pastor's child. The pastor's child, mm-hmm. girl. And then everybody, you know, was kind of like, um, you know, how did this happen and what did y'all do? And I just kept looking at them mm-hmm. thinking, it's not a formula. Like, it's not, right. you know, but I do recall having multiple moments where there were people from our church I actually have a binder of a scrapbook of all the cards that I saved from people sending me cards of encouragement. Mm -hmm. And so many of those cards had women saying, let me tell you about my story. Yeah. You know, let me. And these were women I'd grown up with that they were singing in the choir or in ministry. And I I just was kind of like, it was kind of like my ticket to find out about all the grace everybody else needed. I was reading those cards like, "Uh -uh." (laughs) uh-uh. But I just remember thinking about, I I was so not focused on waiting on the beat down to come in my life Mm. because I was extended such grace by people being the hands and feet of Jesus in that circumstance. And that was the, in the beginning of my 20s and multiple times in my 20s, just trying to find my way. Grace, God gave grace upon grace upon grace. But at this point in my life, I, I see what we look at for those shocker moments, you know, that yeah. this is what Jesus did. This is how I came to grace. This is how God rescued me. And I see so many moments of grace and they all look the same to me. Mm-hmm. You know, we look for these moments Mm -hmm. where God had to rescue us and these stories, right? Mm -hmm. We like a good story. Mm -hmm. But when you've walked with God long enough, you see that this grace is, it's not a moment. It's not a storm. It's not Mm -hmm. a, it's not a flood. It's a constant trickle of a stream of grace that he's offering to us all throughout our lives. Mm -hmm. Um, A few years ago, my husband had some challenges with his health and I was in corporate America in my 20s. In my 30s, I stayed home with kids and that was I was good. I was right. like, this yeah. is where I want to be. Yeah. Yeah. So when he um, ran into those health challenges and we had to figure out, okay, where is the money coming from? I didn't have a plan for that, you know? Right. I, mm-hmm. I do remember thinking, I went to college, I got a degree, I'm sure I can figure something out. Yeah. But what God has done in my life um, in, in a ministry way, wasn't, I wasn't aiming for that ever actually, um, didn't, wasn't interested in that. But what God did to order steps, even in that. I remember my dad coming to me and saying, um, cause when he was writing, there was a book he was writing for women and he wanted me to help him out with that. And I said, oh no, I'm not doing that. And he said, why? I said, well, first of all, I don't want anybody to think that any prescription that I put in here is because I've done it all right. I don't even want to pretend to be that person. Right. That's number one. Number two is, ain't nobody got time for that. <laughs> I don't have time for that. I had college age kids in kindergarten at the same yeah. time. And then he said to me, don't you already write? Well, I I always loved to write. Mm -hmm. So it was just something I would do for myself in journals or on a blog. So aiming to even write, aim to be, aiming to be in the ministry, aiming to, I wasn't even aiming for that. Mm -hmm. So when people say, what does grace look like in your life? Mm -hmm. I can say it looks like him rescuing me from making decisions I didn't need to be making, Mm -hmm. but it also looks like him providing for me, for him giving me a place to work alongside my parents in ministry, for him to take what I was doing all that time that I had no intention of using. And for him to say, this is what I have. It's been grace upon grace upon grace. Mm -hmm. And the beautiful thing in my mind about walking with God is that if you'll just walk with him, that he has this effervescent flow of grace upon grace upon grace upon grace. And you don't have to have some crazy great story of grace for you to see his grace at work in your life. I'm so curious, what does grace look like for you? Whether it's been that moment or whether it's been this grace upon grace upon grace, his steady grace at work in your life. I mean, for me, it was a moment. Like I had a huge rock solid moment where like I hit rock bottom and here came grace. And it was Max Lucado wrote a book about grace and he talked about how it was wave after wave. And I, mm-hmm. that's how it reminded me. I just always think of grace as like the ocean, like the wave that comes in after another wave that comes in. So for me, it was a huge moment, but I was kind of like you, except I believe the opposite. I always thought, well, my mom, 
her testimony is, I think she might have stole bubble gum when she was a kid. Like, she's been the goody two-shoe, perfect child, everything. My dad was, like, the total opposite, you know, and he shared his testimony and everything, but he was just, and I would hear his testimony, I would see all these people coming to get saved, and I remember thinking, I've got to create a testimony. And so I remember, yeah. even in my bad days, going, well, at least I'm creating a testimony because I love <laughs> Jesus so much. Like, I knew it. I knew he would one day use yeah. it, but it was like I justified my yeah. sin because at least I'm creating a testimony. Like, it's good to go, right? And so, like, that was the way. I actually remember when I did get saved, Dad and I had this conversation, and he kind of changed how he talked about it because in our world and in church, it's over-celebrated, yep. that one, instead yeah, of the person. How far you come. Yes, right. instead yeah. of the faithfulness instead of Instead of it. the grace to keep you. Yes, like, like that's yes. The, the keeping grace, and I feel like that's my story. Because yeah. I, like you, I felt like I had to make up one. Right. Because in the 80s, you know, we're old people. In the 80s, <laughs> um, I'm just looking at no. you two. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. <laughs> it was like the thing you, uh, the yeah. people that were on the stage is not, had these big, right. you know, absolutely you know, drug addicts or gang, you know, the whole right. thing. And I'm just right. like, I, I parked in the handicap only parking place. <laughs> I mean, like, I, I didn't have that, yeah. so I felt like I had to like make it up. And so until I feel like God challenged me and said, "Didn't my grace keep you? Yeah, wow. keep you." Yeah. So there is an element of keeping grace. So, so even when you have the hard really challenging moments and you've right. had them and I'm looking forward to hearing about that. And still the rest of your life has to be the keeping grace, right? right? So right. the rest of our story has to be God's Lord. grace keeping us. I hope you enjoyed this video. Subscribe today and you'll never miss a new upload. And don't forget to check out our Better Together shop. Thanks for being a part of our community.